Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about cleaning up the engine bay and getting it ready to install the electrics and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. It's probably fair to say this week didn't start on the best note, but it ended pretty well, so I'll show you what happened. Got a funny feeling it's gonna be one of those weeks. <coughs> Got a cold as well. Green machine's here because it sank last night, uh, quite predictably. I had actually fixed the bilge pump and the float switch, but then there was a huge windstorm last night and it just opened up a split in the hull that the bilge pump couldn't even, you know, wasn't even close to keeping up with. So I sort of bailed it out. It's got a lot of flotation in it, so the motor doesn't go under it, it sort of sits at gunnel height. So I managed to sort of bail it out and bring it up here. To be honest with you, I'm pretty close to giving up on this boat. It's so old now. It's just too fragile to live in the water 24 seven. So anyway, got it up here, got a few things out. Of course, I did have a couple of bits for the GM in it, which sunk as well. Awesome, anyway. I don't know where the crack is, but all the ones previously have been along here where the sort of the main chine, where the sides meet the bottom and it just splits and water just gushes in. That'll do it. That's new, look at that. Split all the way along here. It just cops it at that point of the boat and it flexes along here and it just tears it. You can see how much water must have been coming in. There's no way the bilge pump was gonna keep up with that all night long, well the battery anyway. So of course battery went under and uh, fried off the positive terminal. Fuel tank floated, and it really only can't to here, so I think the motor will be fine. Controls went under, taco went under. The reason I'm not super worried about it is that the boat, you know, it's just too old, it really is. It's uh, maybe late 60s, 70s sort of thing, so you're talking about a 50 year old aluminium hull living in the water the whole time. The motor doesn't go under because of the seats, the seats here, go right round and they're all full of flotation. So the motor's fine. I think I'll take that off and then scrap the hull. <laughs> Goodbye green machine. The other reason I'm not that worried is I'm thinking now with the trawler what I really need is a tender that I can lift on board and it'll just be a little boat to get from the island to the mainland or from the island to the trawler. So I jumped on Amazon last night and found a little inflatable uh, about nine foot long for 700 bucks and I thought oh look that's pretty good so I ordered one of those and now I'm going to start looking for a little motor to put on it selling the 40 Honda will probably cover that sort of cost so I'll just end up with something smaller newer and a better tender for the trawler instead of a bigger older boat uh, good news though <laughs> I was looking through the camping gear that Vic stores under here uh, in the Land Rover and I found a camping stove and a kettle. So I'm boiling up some water so we can start soaking these rubbing strips and get them bent in. I haven't got any towels here, but I do just have a bag of they're sort of like terry toweling type rags. So I'm gonna lay those over, then pour the hot water on. An obvious suggestion, I say obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me at the time, is that yes, this is the steepest part of the curve. Mm, it's almost in the middle in some ways, but the great thing about having this on now is the back section here will hold its curve. It's been on there, you know, four or five days now through various, you know, sunset, sunrise. So I'll wet it down. Then I think what I'll do is I'll take it off, do all the oiling, reattach it at the front. So we've got the leverage to bend it round. And then hopefully when we get to the end, it'll already have that curve sort of locked into the memory of the grain and it should go back on just fine. Anyway, that's the plan. So I'll get some water on the front here anyway, just to make it a bit more supple. And we'll try that over the next couple of days. The kettle's starting to boil, so I'll go and tip it all over the cloths. I'll grab some plastic tomorrow too, so I can kind of wrap it up and stop it just evaporating and drying out.
got a little piece of angle line here that I'm going to drill four holes along and then cut into four brackets. I'm going to weld them onto the bulkhead, which is then going to be where I'm going to mount a bit of plastic board for all the electrics to go onto. So I'll drill first, then cut second. Still been trying to get these gate valves open so I can service them, but really stuck. Had it soaking in some kerosene. I'll put some heat on it. Keep trying. All right, holes are drilled now. I'm just gonna clean the rust off on the wire wheel before I cut it up with the chop saw. I always feel bad pulling up to wharves when there's birds sleeping. Poor old Mr. Pelican. I always feel like saying, duh, just sit there, it's cool. But, you know. They're not so trusting. Unless you've got fish. I'm just having a bit of a think about where to mount the electrical panel and I'm starting to think I might actually make two. I'll show you why. I originally was going to put them on this side because the wet exhaust blocks that side but we're taking this out and these two cables here are the main power feed to the wheelhouse. Maybe I'll replace them anyway but obviously they'll reach that side just fine but not this side here. Also I've actually got quite a lot of electrical stuff to install. And I'd rather have maybe two themed boards than having one really crowded board. I could have one, for example, that's just dedicated sort of all charging and current coming into the batteries, and the other side being all the circuit breakers and bus bars and everything for current coming out of the batteries, something like that. So what I might do is actually make up four more brackets tonight and look at putting a board on both sides. All right, I'm just gonna hold it in place with the magnet like that. Put a few tacks on it and then weld it out. Got a viewer Phil who's come down today to help take the concrete out of the lazarette, so big thanks to Phil. While he's doing that, I'm going to cut this old wet exhaust pipe because it's in the way of doing the second two brackets for the electrical board. Here's a piece of polyboard, which is, uh, you kind of see it marked as king board. It's some sort of polyurethane, you know, plywood sheet style of thing, but plastic obviously. And I'm gonna cut some of this up to mount all the electrics to. Then I'm gonna have some as a bait board, some as a chart table. So I've got this one sheet, it's not cheap, but I'm gonna make lots of stuff out of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go back in the engine bay, measure the largest electrical board I can fit, then we'll cut it out of this ply or out of this polyboard. So, got the four brackets in each corner on both sides. I am gonna go inside and grind that pipe out. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna grind the pipe out of the transom as well. I'm not gonna go back to wet exhaust, not this system anyway, so I may as well bite the bullet. So, front to back, saying 700. Let's go the full 700. And then the narrowest distances between these flanges, which is five. But let's make it, let's make it 480. Give myself just a little gap. So 700 by 480. Can't get two lengthways, so. Let's say 480. So I don't make this cut into the board, I'm going to cut this whole end right off. I'll get two pieces, we'll have an off cut, but I'm sure I'll find a use for it. In case you're wondering, this is what the board is.
I know people are always on at me about using a speed square and a straight edge to run the saw along, but with the guide at the front of the saw, running the blade through the cut and keeping the cut in the sight guide at the front, it's pretty easy to do a pretty straight line without it. I'm going to seal up the fuel tanks now just so that I can continue cleaning in the engine bay and not have dust going in there. So I'm going to give the insides a wipe out with a uh, diesel and a rag. Alright, pop this nitrile gasket on. Gasket on, cover on. Now what I'm gonna do is just put all the nuts on finger tight and then we're gonna torque them in a few different rounds. I'll probably do like, I don't know, even just 10 or 15 Newton meters. Come round, then we'll do another spiral and just get it to sit as evenly as we can. These are all new stainless nylocks I'm putting on. Ooh, sorry, it's a bit boomy under here. All right, I'll just sap them down gently with the little impact gun before we start talking them. What I'm going to do now is just set this little torque wrench to, what should we make it? Let's go 20 Newton meters. And then I'm just going to go around and do them all in a spiral pattern. They're all torqued to 20 Newton meters now. It's not a lot of pressure, but at the same time I want the gasket to do its job. I don't want to sort of squeeze the life out of it and make it too thin. So I'm actually tempted to do my pressure testing and then just go around and up the mould to 40 if it does leak. So I'm going to do the same on the other side and then at least they're sealed up and I can go nuts cleaning in here without getting the fuel tanks dirty again. Okay, both hatches on now. Camera went flat, so I'm on my phone now, but I've got to give you a quick look. What I'm going to do now is get my two bits of poly board and drill them so that I can mount them onto these brackets. I want to do that while they're empty because it'll be easier. Then I'm going to take them back to the workshop at home, start getting all the electrical gear bolted onto it, and then when they're a bit heavier, I'll be able to still get them up and just bolt them in without having to do any fiddly drilling. I've got the old shelf down the bottom that had the batteries on it and I was thinking of sort of fixing it up and painting it because it's got a little lip on it, you know, it took the best effort to make and I thought, you know, that is pretty cool but then I thought, look, actually the batteries should be strapped down anyway so why don't I just use a bit of the poly board, make a shelf that can never rot, put the batteries on, strap them down. Part of me thinks maybe the shelf's a good idea because if a strap breaks you've got a bit of a backup against... Uh, the battery sliding off you know that's something I guess I haven't quite decided about the shelf yet but I'm thinking I will actually go the polyboard for it if I strap the batteries down strongly enough they should never come free I could always attach some sort of lip onto it anyway I've got the boards for the electric installation up at the workshop now at home I'm gonna do a separate video on my plans for that so we'll wrap up here for this video I was actually planning to get this video out first but you know the week sort of got away from me even though the boat show last week was a little bit of a break, it was actually quite busy, you know, rushing, flying, being at the show, flying straight home. And I kind of do feel like I need a little bit of a break from this boat project at the moment. I'm still enjoying it, but just need a bit of a rest. 
As a result, I've decided to go on a bit of a road trip in the Land Rover, drive up to Bundaberg and see Brewpeg, which is Damien and Jess's steel trawler. They've been working on it for, I think, about three years now, and it's really getting close as well. It's going to be nice just to have a break, as well as just have a look at the way they've done certain things, get some ideas and help sort of push on with the last stage of my build. I am, however, tomorrow going to get in and film a video on my current plans for the electrics, which means you guys will have a chance to comment on that over the coming week. Then I'll have a look at your comment, your ideas, have a look what Damon and Jess have done on their boat, and hopefully bring all that together to what we think of as the best design, and then get cracking with that sometime the following week. All right, well, I'll catch you in a day or two. I am going to get straight on and do the electrical video, so you'll see that in a day or two. It won't be long at all. I am also genuinely selling the green machine and the motor with it. I'll probably just sell it all as one thing. I can't even be bothered taking it off. So if anyone's interested in that boat, then it is for sale. I don't know. You know, I want a grand or something for it, maybe. So let me know if you're interested. Um, not selling it because I need the money. Don't sort of go into, no, keep the green machine, you know, and make donations. It's, it's not about that. It's just not the right boat for me anymore. It really isn't. So I'm going to sell that, use the money to get a little motor for the inflatable, and that's what I'm going to run around in from now on. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you in a couple of days. See ya.